Last week, we began a conversation about child development from a chiropractic perspective. Now, in particular, we discussed the importance of spinal function and movement in the development of the brain and nerve system and its ability to adapt to the ever-changing environment in which it finds itself. This week, we're gonna go a little deeper onto just how spinal movement impacts the brain. Now, firstly, on a side note, everything we discussed today from a pediatric viewpoint is equally applicable to the adult patient. So, in order to provide some context to this discussion, let me take you back just a few short years. It's 2002. I'm a slightly younger, but still the ruggedly handsome version of myself, which of you recognize, just with a few less silver highlights. And I'm sitting in my neurology class in what is my final semester of chiropractic school. And my lecturer says those now fateful words. The nervous system is hardwired. Once you hit adulthood, the nervous system's ability to change or rewire itself is significantly limited. That was the thinking and understanding of the nerve system and brain circa 2002. So now fast forward to 2010 and a Canadian chiropractor by the name of James Chestnut took the chiropractic profession by storm. And that was with his ability to use super simple analogies to explain the detailed neurology of the effect of a chiropractic adjustment and its role in the ability of the body to adapt to its environment. He also introduced the majority of the profession to the concept of epigenetics, and that is the impact of the environment has on genetic expression. Now, a significant component of what Dr. Chestnut discussed was the ability of the body via the nerve system to adapt and change depending upon its environment, both internal and or external. But hang on. 2002 neurology taught me that the nerve system was basically hardwired or fixed once we hit adulthood. How can adaptation or change be a nerve system thing? Welcome to a quiet weekend in 2014. I'm peacefully minding my own business looking through a local bookshop when I stumble across a book which would not only finally explain most of my uni neurology lectures in plain English, but also tie together my learnings from chiropractors such as Dr. Chestnut, but also my clinical experiences from the previous 12 years. The book entitled Spark, ironically sparked a yearning for more and more information for me to understand just how it is that when I, as a Gonstead chiropractor, push on a person's spine, that things such as coordination, sleep, language, and healing can change. So here in 2018, I'm going to summarize my learnings to date. One, spinal movement is the critical ingredient for brain growth and development at all ages. Two, movement stimulates super cool chemicals in the brain which act like fertilizer. Regular repetition of those movements further supercharges those fertilizer chemicals. Three, the nerve system and brain are very much a use it or lose it system. Repetition of a movement or skill is the best way for the nerve system to learn. Now let's highlight some elements which are relevant to the infant development. Why do you think a chiropractor considers an infant's posture so important? Why do you think it is so important that an infant moves in a balanced and sequential pattern throughout those first 12 to 18 months of life? And why do you think it is vital for appropriate development that an infant is assessed regularly by a nerve system and movement expert, AKA a chiropractor? And finally, how does any of this importance of spinal movement and nerve system function differ in the adult population? Hint, it doesn't. So my very, very last question, when were your nerve system, spinal movements and posture last checked.